Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lords and Wetlands, the chapter 4 of the campaign Hub of Commerce, I believe it was called. So start by building a centralized marketplace storefront that you build there will be used by peasants who don't have a storefront in their own zone. So create a marketplace, you go to zones, and then marketplace. So let's make it here. Um... It wants six storefronts. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's do it 10 by uh, that. And then it wants, you know, what? let's do it a bit different. Let's do it like this. There you go. And then one here. Uh, one. Hmm. So let's do one, one, and then two, four, and six. And then it wants a camp. Oops. It wants a campfire. I wish I could put it in the middle. So, uh, I, you know what? I could fix it by doing this, this, and then this, and then go into here and do this. There you go. That should do the trick. Yes. All right, so storefronts are being built. They are already using it, which is good. So let's look at what we have. We have the manor, very nice. We have the farm and the inn. But now we have the farm. And the farmers, we have the forester, we have fishers. And another farm. Uh, if a supplier has only a few customers that purchase a regular, there's no need for them to come to the marketplace. So make sure they have their own storefront. So we have another far an empty farmhouse, empty fishing house, a bakery, and another farm, and another forester, and a grinder. We don't have a tavern, I see. Alright, so build a storefront in different royal forests. So let's put one here by doing it. Ooh, no, uh, there we go. Make sure it's not this way. And let's head up to this one and set it right here. And that should be good. So let's full speed ahead. So, this town will need a lot of newcomers to revitalize the economy. Decide which family is the best fit for running the inn. So, I'm going to do the butter family. So, we need to create an inn, zones, and then... Inn. Um, 10 beds. So, let's do something like this. Something like this, and something like this and this all right i'm going to pause it and then i am going to build the walls we don't have any so we need to use the hay walls let's do this and then this actually i am going to expand it out by doing this size and then edit zone we need a door we need a door. Ten beds, you say. One, two. Actually, it doesn't need to be this. I do want this to be a bit wider, though. Then I can also do this a little bit wider. My mouse is a bit strange right now. All right, so one, two, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I don't really like that center how it looks, but it is what it is. Let's have a couple of cooking tables. Uh, let's have a cold couple of cauldrons. Let's have them 
in the middle. And a cooking table. We need a well that can be down here. We need a bar which can be right here. A bar which can be right here. We need a wooden block which can be here. Then we need some small shelves. How many do you want? One of each. Alright. Uh, ground barrel. So let's just do a couple of them. Let's do a chest which can be right here. Then we need some barrel rail. So here and here. Then we need some grant depositories which can be here. And here and then we can turn this around like so and that should be everything we need yeah and then we need a heat source which can be right smack in the middle here and then we need of course a front door which can be here and tables uh boom boom Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Space. Here we go. And then we can have something like this. And then have some tables. Oops, I need one more. There you go. And that should do the trick. And with that, I am going to pause and let it be built up like normal. So it went done a lot quicker than I thought. And one way to elevate the supply issue is to offer goods from your own stock. Anyone who needs them will trade with you as long as your price is better than the market price. So we need to build a storefront inside the market, a, um, not the marketplace, inside of the warehouse, which is in... Uh, uh production there it is so let's build a storefront right here let's build it and then we need to go into the um, warehouse book go to trade and find flower which is right here sell it specific a hundred and then we need to look at the sold by locals for 60 and we are offering it with zero discounts. We could offer it with, let's say, 10% discount, which we are selling it for 54 copper, which means people should be buying it once we have the storefront up and going. And this is how the warehouse is looking so far, or the end. You can also offer some resources for free. This is especially good when you want to allow easy access to materials to help with construction project. So let's go into the warehouse book. Into trade. Uh, straw. Let's just get you away. Uh, where are though? There you are. Um, so we're going to sell 100%. Wait, hang on. Oh. Uh, going to warehouse, bulk, trade, sell, specific. We want 300 set. And uh, there's the free button. I'm a dum dum. Okay, so that's straw, and then we want that wood. Which should be up here. That's plank, that's wood. So let's sell, specific. 50 set and give away for free so now caravan unfortunately your supplies are not limitless for a more sustainable solution you need to build a caravan marketplace so that's the same as marketplace just for caravans let's go into the caravan marketplace we can set it up here and then click on it we need uh we need a caravan um one of these, so you want three, so one. Hang on. That's one. That's one. 
um you know what actually no one there there and there and then we can have a there 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 actually i need to do this because i also we also need a heat area it can be in here then we can do a marketplace and a marketplace and can extend the zone to here so market 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 storage storage i don't want to three wait hang on let me do this again <laughs> Ugh. so a storefront and a caravan right do again storefront and a storage then we do a campfire a space and a storage yes all right let's skip through the night and then um, we will build it first thing in the morning let's uh, assign the family to the butter there you go they are now the proud owner of the inn and people should be attracted to visit so just waiting for the last uh, storefront Karen's arrive every few days as long as there is an empty storefront and Karen stores that they can reserve. So they will arrive, put their things in the Karen storage and then head and rent a bed at the inn through the night. Um, so now we're just waiting for the Karen's. Mm. Oh, excuse me, more or less. So we do have a fishing home ready, which I might take a farmer. We have our Another farm we have ready and a windmill or millers. Um, yeah, so we're just waiting for Karen's. They should hopefully arrive by the morning, I believe. Hopefully, maybe. Question mark. Also, need to pay attention on the recording time so we don't go too much over. I don't need to do some editing. Ugh don't mind editing it's quite fun actually anyway um they need a roof so let's get a roof uh, i don't really have too much wood rods let's just do out of touch like so and like so i have some fancy cobwalls and some plated roof and here's the caravan you can see one of summer halves. Beautiful. Full speed. So you can see they have set up their caravan in here. And now they are selling a bunch of items to the citizens of this little village. And here's a new family, a milling family, which is what we need up here. And a one bed. They are four people, so we either need to expand it or let them go, but hopefully not let them go. Uh, so that's Caravan and that's the Milling family. So if they want to join, we do need to add a few more beds. Um, I think like this should be good. So now like this, remove this and add a, this. Add a door and a door and then we can add a couple of beds in here. That's four extra beds and a double bed here. That should be good. So let's just edit zone and then expand it out here. And like as you can see here, not every household needs, needs to have a separate um household and a work zone that can be merged together like this and like this uh we have a milling family let's ex accept them and let's say hey you can live here welcome welcome bundable so right up off the bat we have a house ready for them to sleep in and live in they are four people, so they have more than enough beds. They might need an extra chair. So let's give them one right here. And might as well just... 
give them a roof over their heads. And skip through the night while we are waiting for the next caravans. So I will um, take you all back once we have the last two ones. You can also trade with caravans yourself. Buy resources that your settlement needs to build resource or sell excess resources to build your treasury. So now let's click this way and so set the purchasing order for 50 of flour from caravan. So let's go into trade. Click on the flour. Click on the caravans. And buy. And let's buy 50. Then we need some bread. Let's do the same. Buy caravan 50. Set. And Oh, from locals, my bad. Uh, so just ignore this. Um, buy 50. Let's set. And then go to Karen's and offer 50 bread from the Karen's. There you go. The market will change prices every morning. Villagers use their experience to predict if their stock will decrease over time. If they think it will, they increase the price. In a balanced economy, prices always recover to their standard prices, which is a very nice thing. So let's go into market list, and here you can see. The f let's go into food. You can see. Uh, oh, false produce, false production of this, even if it's not profitable. When off currents are not allowed to sell these resources. So you can see the current price and they has changed during the day. Has not changed. And then we have all of this. We have from drinks. You can see currents are less likely to sell and will be interested in purchasing. And here they want, are not trading with these resources. And you have the commodity. Uh, production of this resource not profitable. We have materials. And this is a price increase by two copper for the planks. Equipment. We have potions and animals. Which doesn't have any. So view accounting reports. We'll skip detailed accounting about the production. This can give you insight into the balance of supply and demand. Let's go into here, go into accounting report, go to here, and products, uh, bear pen consumed, produced, current, wood rods, no, nothing produced, nothing, or six, nothing consumed, six produced, and current. So you can see here for all of the different families. Um, all of their zones, what they are producing and consuming. Why well, I think oh, because they bought bear pens. You can see what we are taxing. Uh, 91 planks, 27 wood, 77 wood rods, and so on and so forth. You can see how much they're producing, how much we are taxing. So very nice overlay, a lot of to get into if you really want to go deep into the game. If the cost of material is higher than the product, villagers will stop producing it until the market recovers. You can force them to produce it even if they lose money on it. So let's set force production produce policy on bread. So let's find bread under food. Uh, there you are. And set force. Every time we also buy something from caravans, money will leave your economy. This might not always align with your goal, so use import embargo where needed. So caravans sell embargo on straw. So once again, go into the market price, into commodity, find straw and set it to off. Caravans will also buy from villagers if the price is reasonable. Export and bar um, export and bar goes can be a useful tool to prevent losing an important resource or manipula manipulate supply and demand. Ah. Ah, worlds can be difficult. So set caravan and bar buy embargo on fish. Go into food, find fish. Uh, fish. Boom. And uh, set, set caravan buy embargo on wood, which is under 
Mat no, it's uh, under material. Yeah, under material. So wood and off. You can also set priorities on production for each family. For example, to make three wood planks for each unit of wood produced. Setting priority to zero will have them ignore the resource fully. So set priority of planks instead of four. So let's go into zone visibility. Let's go to this one. Let's go to adjust priorities. One planks and boom, boom, four. So they will do 50% planks and the rest. If you anticipate a sources of demand, limit the maximum stock they should keep. You can also have them maintain higher resource of material to improve their efficiency. So what do you want us to do? Set production limit of bread inside bakery to 50. So let's go into adjust priorities and go right here. In here, priorities Set production limit to 50. Enter to make it stop. And then stock of bread inside of bakery to 1.5, which is um, here. So we need to go to material stock. It was right in front of my face. I am a dum dum. Villagers try to balance their stock to suit their needs, but they will prioritize profit over extra safety. Farmers with a lot of food will not hold on to it in fear of troubling times when there is money to be made now. So, produce wood, produce bread, produce grain. So with that, I am going to pause and wait for this to be done. And just like that... You should be familiar with the basics of trading. Keep trading with caravans, grow the settlement, and maintain a balanced economy. The trust that you won't fail. So, campaign completed. Uh, now we just need to welcome visitors, target the amount of families, target the population, and collect taxes from the villagers. And reach the, um, well, the settlement wealth, which we already have. But, um... As always, we have completed the tutorial section of this mission. You may choose to finish it or continue your adventure by returning to the main menu, which we are going to do. Because this is just a waiting game and um, we've all... We've, we've been through this one way or another. It's just for me to wait until we have created 25 different families. And then, um, you know have uh, more families in here and some more population and then collect from collect taxes from said families so we just need to wait a full season but uh, yeah that's the chapter four of the lords and villains campaign do you still enjoy it do you want to see more because if you, if, if you don't want to see more we will return back to the normal save but uh, if you want to see more, I will, of course, do the full campaign. Leave a like. Let me know what you think. And yeah, maybe leave a like or subscribe if you feel like it's so bad. And with that, thank you all so very, very much for watching. Take care. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.